One of the easiest ways to make your color grade come alive is to make your colors pop using saturation. In this video, I've got six different methods for you. Let's head into Resolve and look at method one. We'll start with the most common one, and this is the one you may have used already, and that's to switch over to the primaries color wheels, which we're on at the minute, and then use this saturation control. I'm gonna hold the mouse button down over sat and move it to the left to decrease the saturation, and we can go all the way to black and white. Double click to reset it, or hold the left mouse button down, move the mouse to the right, and you can see the saturation is gradually increasing until it starts to look pretty crazy, and I start to look a bit like an Oompa Loompa. This saturation control in the primaries palette is really useful if you're just getting started with color grading, but it does have some limitations. The main one is that it doesn't model the way light works in terms of how we perceive light and color. It doesn't behave in a way that would make your saturation look movie-like, more more filmic, more cinematic. And when you use this control to increase your saturation, it can just make things look a bit artificial or a bit more digital. Okay, let's move on to number two. I'm gonna reset everything by clicking here. Method number two is to use this color boost control down in the primaries palette. And before I even touch this and show you what it does, I wanna give you a quick disclaimer. This control can very quickly make your image look unreal and overblown and very amateurish. So just be really careful with this one if you ever use it. I'm gonna hold down the left mouse, button and start to increase the value for color boost. Color boost will target the less saturated areas and bring up the saturation in those areas more so than in already saturated areas. So you can see at about 33.5, the green bushes have started to look more saturated. If I just disable this node, this is what it looked like before, and this is what it looks like after. You can see that my t-shirt here is starting to look a little bit overcooked. My face is definitely starting to look a bit crazy. So I'm just gonna double click color boost to reset to zero, and we'll just add a even more subtle amount at 8.5. This is with color boost, this is without color boost. With, without. There are better ways to add saturation to less saturated areas that give you a lot more control. That's more of an advanced thing for a future video, so make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. Next up, I've got a couple of ways where you can increase the saturation, but only for specific colors. Method number three is to use the curves control. And if you've got one of these other things selected, you can click here to go to the curves control. And then you want to click on these buttons here until you see the curves control that says hue versus saturation. This control lets you increase the saturation of certain colors or ranges of colors rather than the whole image. There's a couple of different ways to work with this. The first way is to just randomly click on this line and alter the saturation of colors. You can see as I increase that, we're altering or increasing the saturations of blues. And if I decrease this, we decrease the saturation of blue. Have a look at my t-shirt, it's almost gray. And if I move this up, the saturation of that t-shirt gets a lot higher. Just click here to reset. The other way is to click one of these colors. I'm gonna click green. That's going to add this point in the middle and two control points at each side. And now we can increase the saturation of greens or decrease the saturation of greens. Also notice that we've got a little histogram here showing us the range of colors in those color bands. There's actually not that much color in this green color band. So let's reset that. The other method to select areas of color is to make sure you've got this qualifier turned on. This eyedropper will be white and then just just drag over areas of the image. So let's say we want to work with these bushes. I'm just gonna drag around and let go of the mouse button and we get these control points added. And if I increase this middle point, we should see the saturation of those bushes increase, which we do. And you can move left and right to fine tune the areas of color that get increased. And if we decrease this, we can turn those bushes to black and white. Method number four for increasing saturation is also a method where we get to target a specific hue or specific color. And to access this tool, we're gonna to click here to open up the color slice tool. The color slice tool divides the hues up into red, skin, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. And if you wanna see which areas of the image will be affected by these channels, you can click and hold down on this button. So this red channel will affect mostly my face, the skin tone, my hair, and other parts of my face. The yellow will select mostly those bushes, the green, a tiny bit of those bushes, a little bit of sky in the cyan, a little bit of the sky in the blue, and a tiny bit of my face in magenta. So let's go and change the saturation of these bushes. And we know that they're 
in this yellow zone. All you need to do is grab this control, which is the saturation control, and slide this bar up. Watch what's happening in the bushes. You can see they're getting a lot more saturated. And if we drag this down, all the color disappears from those bushes. So I'm just gonna max this out so you can see it on YouTube. Now the color slice tool is very interesting because it acts in a different way from some of the other color controls in DaVinci Resolve. That's because the color slice tool operates in a more realistic way, a bit like how color and light behave in the real world. In the real world, when you increase the saturation of something, its darkness actually decreases. And that's what the color slice tool models. I'll reset all of the color slice by clicking this reset button. And method five to increase the saturation in your image is to still use the color slice tool, but instead of modifying individual colors, we can use this saturation control to increase the saturation for the entire image. So let's hold down a mouse button and start to increase this saturation and watch what's happening in the image. And of course, you can go way too far with this as well. Double click to reset and we'll just add slightly more subtle amount of saturation. The face is still looking a bit weird and that's because we haven't color corrected that image. So let's do a super quick color correction. We'll add a serial node before. We use the HDR global. Normally I'd spend more time on that and then we'll re-enable this saturation, come back here and just reduce that a bit. This is what it looks like with the saturation and this is what it looks like without. You can see we're adding saturation in a more realistic, more natural looking way. So I would recommend if you want to add saturation to an entire image, use the saturation control in the color slice tool instead of the saturation control in the primaries color palette. Okay, on to method six. And strangely enough, this has nothing to do with any of the color controls in DaVinci Resolve. We'll just reset this. We'll come back to the primaries controls and we're going to increase the contrast. Watch what happens in the image as I'm increasing the contrast. You can see an increase in the perceived saturation of the image. So it's usually better to increase the contrast of your image and get it looking how you want before you start to add saturation with these methods. Otherwise, if you add contrast after you've added saturation, you're going to be further increasing the saturation which means you then have to go back to the contrast and modify that and it can be a bit inefficient with time. As we just saw when we're color grading in DaVinci Resolve it can be quite easy to start messing up the skin tones making people look a bit strange. You can learn how to prevent this by watching this video next. I'm Jason Roberts, this is DaVinci Dojo, hopefully I'll see you in the next video.